who sheltered me from harm, kept me warm, kept me warm. You gave my life to me. Set me. Textiles to me are. Um basically like fabric and clothing. To me, textiles is pretty much, you know, fabric, so fabric, here. Just everything that we like wear, silk boxers over here, that's <laughs> textiles. My seem like it's not something that we look, often look at, but we actually use it in every, every day, and it's actually really one of the most meaningful things that we need, you know, on this earth, but we tend not to really notice it, and not until this interview, is when I noticed that we really actually use sex sauce in anything. In other words, textiles is the clothes we wear, the bed sheets we sleep on, the interior furnishings in our cars, and the glass cups we drink out of. There is no exact date to pinpoint the invention of textiles. However, we do know that prehistoric man wove fishing nets, ancient Egyptians used linen to wrap their rulers at the time of their burial, and the Chinese wove beautiful silk fabrics over 3,500 years ago. From prehistoric times until the 18th century, textiles were made by hand. By mid-18th century, textiles were now being made by machines thanks to the inventions such as the water frame, spinning jenny, and spinning mule. Textile manufacturing became known as one of the key drivers for the Industrial Revolution. Now astronauts can easily travel to the moon in 28 layer spacesuits with nylon water-cooled underwear. Also, people can live longer because textiles are being used to replace worn out or damaged body parts such as polyester arteries and velour heart valves. In terms of its output and employment, the textile industry is one of the largest industries in the world. The textile manufacturing process is known for their high consumption of resources like water, fuel, and a variety of chemicals that generate a significant amount of waste. Currently, only 8% of the planet's fresh water supply goes to domestic use. About 70% is used for irrigation and 22% by industry. As the textile industry continues to grow, being environmentally friendly is becoming the new trend. Companies with the largest water consumption, such as H&M, Gap, and Kohl's, are looking at areas where they can reduce the amount of water used during production. We brushed our teeth, hair, and clothes with bristles made of synthetic or natural fibers. Police and soldiers are able to go to work feeling protected by their ballistic and slash resistant vests. The invention of Stoslin has saved the lives of many wounded soldiers by reducing the amount of blood loss when severely injured. Firefighters are able to withstand scorching fires when rescuing helpless victims. Textiles are used in the food industry to provide plant covers, absorbent liners in prepackaged meats, and reusable cloth bags. Farmers protect their crops and livestock with textile fabrics. Fine mesh nets protect fruit from insects, while textile braids are used for leads for show horses and cattle. Manufactured goods are transported on conveyor belts of compound textiles. Outdoor activities take place under tents and canopies to protect us from the sun and rain. Roads are able to last longer with synthetic non-woven underlays that minimize shifting of the road base and development of potholes. At the gas station, Gas is pumped through a fibrous filter and a fabric supporting hose. Buildings are warmer with fiberglass insulation and polythylene film wind and moisture barrier. Athletic performance is enhanced with carbon reinforcement fibers in golf clubs and tennis rackets and with body condensing swimwear. Injuries are minimized with padded protective helmets, shoulder and knee pads, gloves specific to the sport, and footwear that protects the foot and ankle while enhancing performance. 
An easy way to understand the environmental impact of textiles is by following a basic piece of clothing through its life cycle, such as a cotton t-shirt. The life cycle of a t-shirt goes through five stages. First, the material phase. This is where the fiber is harvested or manufactured. Second is the production phase. This is where the textile is made. Third is the transport phase. This is where the textile is shipped from one place to another. Fourth is the use phase. This is when the consumer wears it. And lastly is the disposal phase. This is when the shirt is thrown away. In the material phase, pollution comes from cotton cultivation, such as fertilizing, harvesting, and the use of chemicals. In the production phase, pollution comes from chemicals and dyes such as spinning, knitting, bleaching, dyeing, cutting, and sewing. In the transport phase, Pollution comes from carbon emissions such as transportation from factories to distribution chains and retail stores. In the use phase, pollution comes from wasted energy such as washing and drying. In the disposal phase, pollution comes from occupied landfill space. Today, every person now buys more than 81 pounds of textiles every year. Out of the 66 pounds, 12.3% will be reused or recycled, while 69.1% will be thrown in the trash. Climate change or global warming has been a rising issue for quite some time now and the production of textiles is a major causing factor. If this continues, our planet will undergo many changes such as wetlands will get wetter, causing flooding, and drylands will only get drier, causing droughts. Governments can implement a waste management system for all textile manufacturing businesses to reduce the amount of waste. Governments can require textile companies to use automated chemical dosing systems to minimize the amount of water textiles absorb. Also, the government can require textile manufacturers to use high-tech equipment that consumes less water or produces less waste. Lastly, we can contribute by condensing our wash loads, washing during the cooler parts of the day to conserve energy, hanging out our clothes to dry, donating unwanted clothing to thrift stores and charities, and purchasing organic clothing. <laughs>